Having created a charger from cylinders already, I'm now going to do a simple one from cubes, as it requires a slightly different approach to the snapping. When we worked on a cylinder and we wanted to move the pivot point from the centre here, we could use set pivot, and because there's a line here we can use the curve snap and just drag it to the middle of the base. But it's a little bit different with cubes, so I'll just turn my grid back on, and then choose a cube primitive, and grid snap it to the origin like I did with the cylinder. And I'll just scale that a bit and non-p scale it. But then we've got the same situation as before, that the cube has its pivot point in the centre, but we really want it on the base. But this time we don't have any lines to snap it to. So there are two possible solutions to this, and the first is to use the Patch Precision tool on Object Edit. And this allows you to increase the number of lines on the surface just by clicking and dragging. So I'll get just one extra line in the centre here. So now that I've got a centre line to snap to, I can do a set pivot and then curve snap to that. But it snaps to anywhere on the line and it doesn't stop accurately in the middle. But I can do that if I come up to here because this arrow opens up the curve snap options. And here I can change the snap divisions to two. So now if I do my curve snap again, you'll notice that I have this little blue cross and the pivot magnet snaps onto that blue cross exactly halfway along the line. So for example, if I change that setting to three, then I can snap to thirds. So I'll just put that back to two and then snap the pivot again. But there's another method that doesn't use patch precision, but in some ways is better because it can be used in lots of different modeling situations. And that's to use the 2D windows. So I'll just go back and centre the pivot like it was at the beginning. And what I want is for my pivot to move downwards in this view, but not to move away from the centre in this top view. So I'll choose Set Pivot, and if you remember the 2D mouse constraints means I can limit the movement to vertical only. So if I combine that with a curve snap by holding down Ctrl and Alt, then I point to this lower edge, and then click that with the right mouse button. And I'll just give it a wiggle just to check that it's locked on. So I can do the same to move it up onto the grid, but this time it'll be a grid snap. So if I hold down the Alt key and then point the mouse to the grid point and then click with my right mouse button, then it only moves vertically onto the grid. So I'll just scale that down a little bit. And now I can do a copy and a paste using the hotkeys. And I'm still in move, so I'll just check my mouse key direction. So I want to use the vertical mouse button. But if I use the wrong one and don't constrain it, then you can see what it's done. It's just snapped directly onto that outer edge. So I'll undo that and do it properly this time using the right mouse button. And now I can scale that down a bit, and then I'll use non-p scale to make it into a column shape. Now this combined snapping doesn't work in the perspective view. So if I copy and paste this again and then go to move, if I try to constrain it with the right hand key and snap it here, you'll see that again it goes directly onto the edge instead of remaining centred. Now I don't have to work in the four views, but I do need to switch to a 2D view for the snapping to work. And now I'm still in move so I can curve snap and then click with my right mouse button to move this up to the top edge and I can scale that down, and then I'll just do another copy and a paste and a move. And you can see that it ends up being quite quick once you've got the hang of it. Now these skills are really necessary once we start to create more complex shapes. And developing the skills is just about muscle memory, so practice as much as possible on these simple charger shapes until it starts to feel instinctive, and it normally only takes a couple of days. But finally, one of the things I'm asked a lot when I'm teaching is that if, for example, I move this top cube up a little bit, is it possible to scale this yellow one until it exactly matches the bottom of the top one? Well, the answer is no, not just by scaling the cube. But you can do it by displaying the CVs. 
And then if I do a pick nothing and use pick CV instead of pick object and carefully drag select the top row of all the CVs, then I can use the snapping again in the 2D view. And that then stretches the yellow cube right up until it touches the bottom of the black cube exactly. So have a go at modelling these simple charging station designs or something completely different if you want to be creative. But the important thing is that you practice these essential skills.